Western Kentucky's Rick Stansberry, fresh off a comeback for the ages, takes his second place Hilltoppers to the Super Pit. First place North Texas and Player of the Year candidate, JV on Hamlet. You're watching March to March, presented by Smile Direct Club. Just north of Dallas sits the Mean Green, welcoming in Western Kentucky, one meets two in Conference USA. And good afternoon, everybody. John Sadak alongside the former Villanova guard and the Texas Tech head man, Chris Walker. These are the top two teams at Conference USA. A lot of the line. If North Texas wins, it clinches the regular season crown. If Western Kentucky wins, it forges a tie. It controls its own destiny. I'm mean, going to just think about what you just said right there. This is a great day for Conference USA. Their pass system seems to be working. You got the magician. Yes, I call the magician Rick Stansberry pulling off great wins against the upstart coach Mac who has his UNT team in a great position to win the league at home this is going to be a great game today magic can happen when you have players like Tavion Hollingsworth who erupted for 43 points in the comeback game on Thursday he was simply amazing John we had a chance to be there to cover that game that unbelievable comeback he gave it to him any way you want he gets to the foul line he's an excellent foul shooter he's not even a great three-point shooter but he made that bank there didn't call it and came right back down and put it in overtime he was sensational North Texas has been sensational all season long. They've already tied their program record for conference wins of the campaign. Today, with the win, the first regular season outright conference crown in over 30 years. Absolutely amazing the job Coach Matt Greg McCaskill has done. They are one of the best teams in the country at playing at pace. One of the best three-point shooting teams in the country. And the reason why they do it is Mr. Javion Hamlin. He has been fantastic. A man of many talents. The most interesting man in Conference USA, shall I say. He shoots it from three. He has an unbelievable float game. He makes everybody around them better. I love this player. Keep your eyes on him. He's going to have a terrific game. These teams began conference play against one another. It's poetic that here in March, down the stretch, it could come down to what happens today. College basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Smile Direct Club. Straightening smiles for 60% less than braces. By Werner the official ladder of NCAA March Madness, and by AT&T. The legendary mean Joe Green, the Hall of Fame football player, still a regular in these parts. Rick Stansberry, head man for Western Kentucky, said this week, I've never had a team in my career as a team that had to overcome so many things. He's been coaching for almost 40 years. This is one versus two. They met to begin conference play when North Texas blew a 15-point lead in the second half, one of the many epic comebacks Western Kentucky has authored this season. And the opening tap won by the Hilltoppers, who donned the black unis for just the third time this year, sending a message there. Chris Walker? Well, they're definitely sending a message. They come to play. If you listen to what you showed me earlier with Jared Savage, I don't know, John. These guys are on a mission. On high, Carson Williams, three ball. What did Rick Stansberry say an hour before the game? He said a key point in this game, watch Carson Williams, and can he make threes from the perimeter? And like the magician says, comes out and bangs a three first possession. And that is Chris Walker's newly anointed <laughs> nickname for the master of the him. comeback. I got to give it to him because we've seen some unbelievable games. North Texas has had a brilliant season. Zach Simmons doubled opposite. Here's Hamlet who can explode. What a no look. And Goo True as Dan Goo dunks it down. I mean, so good. Simmons out, out of the double team. You got to watch that all game long. And then Hamlet being the smart player that he is, attacks the closeout for the dunk. North Texas wins outright Conference USA champs. Western Kentucky wins. They're tied. And they can end their campaign with a win at FIU to take the title. 
Watch the way North Texas plays. They switch one through five. They're not afraid. I mean, Simmons could be guarding other some of these guards. We'll see what happens. Stride out of bounds. North Texas ball. Now that defense was changed last offseason. A lot of influence from North Texas. Yeah, definitely a lot of influence. You know, that was a nice kick out, as I said, and Hamlet, as he always does, makes the right play. He is so efficient. And a stride out of bounds there, 19 to shoot. Does it feel like North Texas is trying to get the ball to certain spots against this defense? I mean, here's the deal. You, you know they're not going to foul, right? This is the thing that the Western Kentucky, one of the best in the country at not fouling you. So we'll see what happens and what type of strategy that the Mean Green employ as they try to break down this defense. Mo Gibson missed the board of Western Kentucky. Hesitation, blow by for Justice. Extra passes. Rawls from the perimeter, slashes closer, bobbles. Doubled, Savage, smothered. Justice on high, off the fake, taking good to the rack. Bounce to Williams. 14 to shoot, a lot of time here. Deep three, contested for Rawls, bad miss. I mean, one of my keys to the game is share the basketball. They did a great job of sharing the basketball, but a terrible decision by Rawls. I like his aggression, though, because they need him to have a good game. Here's Tavion Hollingsworth. He had 43, a game of a lifetime when they came back from down 17 with 5.51 to go and beat Louisiana Tech. Tavion showing some boosters that shot. I didn't think he was going to dunk that one. And wow. he sprained his ankle in the first half of that game on Thursday. Yeah, I don't know about these ankle injuries. We got to watch out because, again, Josh Anderson was supposed to have a toe injury. He was dunking the ball like crazy. And Hollinsworth, he's very athletic. Carson Williams off the heel. Goo's got it. You get the sense he, the same thing that Rick Stansbury told us is the same thing he told Carson Williams because he's taking two straight threes. So they're going to try to exploit that matchup. Hamlet. Simmons showed the screen. Goo puts it on the deck, muscling in. A lot of up fakes and a banker for the grad transfer. John, that'll be there all game long. We'll see how they continue to exhibit patience. The last game against La Tech, 52 points in the paint, but they didn't get the victory. So we'll see if they can stay with their game plan because they're a really good three-point shooting team. That's what Louisiana Tech employed Thursday in Bowling Green against Western Kentucky and collapsed. Hollingsworth adjusting mid-flight. Wow. Turned his body and finger rolled it, as they say. He yeah, had the best scoring game for a Western Kentucky player in half a century when he posted 43. See West, see West Kentucky, they played their three-quarter court. You like to say they mixed it up back to their man. They'll give that, they'll give Goo that one. Williams in Western Kentucky on the trot. North Texas tries to shape up. Williams dragging into the paint, jump give. Survey, the hesitant dribble, two subs lying in wait for the mean green, including the best shooter in America, the former walk-on, DJ Draper. So Coach Stansbury barking out the calls. You want to get advantage situations. There it is right there. Three to shoot, Hollingsworth, the prayer, answer. Why not? <laughs> Why not continuing from last game? He's starting to open those two huge threes, and that's not the best part of his game, John. So they're getting it done in the early stage of this contest. Hamlet and company. James Reese wants it. He gets fed. He's been a hot hand of late for North Texas. And we'll see if this ball screen action up top. Hamlet, Simmons are really good at that. Him getting to the rim or doing exactly that with the big fella, cleaning up for the putback, getting fouled. And Justice gives the foul. Tavion Hollingsworth getting it done. Pure score. He can adjust in the air. He can shoot from deep. You're watching March to March, presented by Smile Direct Club. Thursday night at Western Kentucky. Hilltoppers down 12 with two minutes to go. Tavion Hollingsworth ties it at 80 with a three. And in overtime, he dominates. Western Kentucky did not know an advantage in regulation and wins it in overtime, 95 to 91. The most points by a Hilltopper since the legend Jim McDaniels had 49 at Tennessee Tech in 1971. And Tavion dedicated that game to his little brother.
He finally got a chance to watch a middle school game. His brother broke part of his leg, fractured part of his patella. It was his senior night. That was the day before, so he dedicated that performance to his brother and said, I love you, little bro. That's unbelievable, man. Have you talked about those are the stories that college basketball are all about. But Mr. Tavion Hollinsworth, we had the pleasure of being there for that game. He had a field day. And, John, he's picked up where he's left off. He's already shot the ball well this game. And Zach Simmons with his dad in attendance for just the second time ever at any level in a wheelchair under a basket to the right. And Simmons, a slight free throw shooter. You see the wrap he has on his right leg, knee extended down. He tweaked that knee and had foul trouble. Only played 11 minutes when these teams first met. Savage off on the triple. The off-balance body control rebound for James Reese. Savage has been on a tear as of late. Fouled out of the last game. He didn't really factor into that win. I like him shooting threes, but I like him more step in, not off a ball screen and kind of pulling back. Thomas Bell wearing 13 is in on the right wing. He is a great sixth man, and the three ball is down. He can board with the best of them, and he has shot brilliantly in league play. Yeah, he definitely has shot the ball. There has been a little bit more awareness there to make him put the ball on the floor. That was far too easy. Leaner off. North Texas after its first made triple. Look out for 55, DJ Draper. He's the best shooter in America. Corner triple off the heel for Bell. Yeah, 55 gets the ball there, even though that's the mean green. They're being red alert because he can make them. Foul here on James Reese, his first hit Hollingsworth. There's the head man for North Texas, Coach Mack, Grant McCasland. He inherited a program that lost 20 games in back-to-back -back seasons before he arrived. Today, he's looking for his third 20-win season in his three years and the program's first regular season conference title in over three decades. I mean, he's been terrific. We had a chance to spend some time with him after practice yesterday. How fun was that? You know, just sitting there and just talking to him about you know, his philosophies and what he thinks about this very positive guy. It's no question that this guy has a bright future ahead of him. Walk-on player at Baylor who embodies toughness. He is challenged to his team. The toughest team wins. And Western Kentucky, a thinner team by necessity, makes its first sub. Hollingsworth out. Seems a little upset as he comes to the bench area to Rick Stansberry. And Josh Anderson takes his place. He confront their extended pressure, a wrinkle from the magician. Yeah, no doubt about it. And he's really good. It depends on who's up top. It could be Justice. It could be Anderson, as you see there. And his length, they're worried about his length. Got to get it across. They just do with one second before a violation. So what happens when you hurry up the most patient team in Conference USA? I know you're still making them think. Let's see if they set some ball. If they try to ball screen with Hamlet, will they trap them? Will they switch it? And how about you don't need to do anything there on that one and just take a three? Wow. JV on Hamlet, but Anderson explodes to the other end. That elevation on the launch is uncanny. But see how quick they get it up the floor. You're talking about the tail of two tape, two tail, uh, two teams, and the tail of the tape. You got one team who wants to play slow. You got another team who wants to play fast. War of Wills. Up the grain of the lane, Bell zigzagging on help, stripped by Rawls. Justice runs the wing. Rawls threads a bounce pass. Savage kick. The long load. Three ball. In and out. Tapped in the air by Williams. Out of bounds. North Texas ball. And you believe, Chris, even though North Texas plays a very methodical pace, the fifth slowest team by possessions per game in college basketball, that that style might actually lend itself to Western Kentucky a bit. Yeah, foul trouble, right? It'll slow the game down. It's not up and down. Even though that's what West Kentucky does, they score the ball, but we're on the road, John. Right. right? You're on the road. You want less possessions. And, I, and they're the older team. I think they're the more experienced teams, as we mentioned, and they've been in tougher games. Here's the 1-2-2. Two, two. This time North Texas handles it better. Rose Smart is in off the bench. Sharpshooter extraordinaire who's overcome a lot in his short career here at North Texas. I'm talking about two very good defensive coaches. Not many mistakes are going to be made. Overplay for a steal. It looked like Mo Gibson was shocked to be that open when he fell down. I said not many mistakes are going to be made, but that was definitely a mistake on the best three-point shooter on the team. 
He's been a hot hand of late. Over the screen plays North Texas. Williams wants it to the post. He's matched up with Goo. Off the jab step, Hollingsworth. Oh, what a threaded bounce pass. Williams, the fake, back to the basket, and one. He is a crafty man. He is certainly crafty. He has that big body. You have to try to get around him. You can't get an advantage post like that. You got to make sure your body gets back around. Can't do that. He's too good. You see Gibson there late on the help. You got to be there on the catch. Crafty is what you said is absolutely right, and that's one of the matchups that Coach talked about. Carson Williams either inside, drive, or you know, scoring the way he does with his array of moves, either driving the basketball with his spin move or making threes. Carson Williams, one of three Kentucky Mr. Basketballs currently playing for Western Kentucky. And one free throw off target. Now they're a great free throw shooting team and it's part of why they're so good in terms of wins and losses. It is, and if they're going to come off with this upset, and I'm going to call it an upset because, you know, the Mean Green take care of business at home. Other than that La Tech slip up, they're really going to have to make free throws, especially in tight situations. Reese off, Williams the board, Western Kentucky on the year, outscores its opponent by nearly nine points a game at the line. They get to the line a ton, they rarely foul. Hollingsworth, a forced pass picked off. Mo Gibson leading to Hamlet. Got a jump stop, got caught in a tough spot. And each team rushing a bit, racing up and down. Their heartbeats have to be going. They are, and Josh Anderson, he usually finishes that with a dunk, but caught him. Hamlet leading. Uh, should we say John Flo game? That's what he does so well. He gets in that, he's a big strong guard once he gets in there. He's going to throw the lob or he's going to float it. Williams, three ball, rim glass, and the tip by Anderson. He has an effect on the game. They say he had a toe injury. I don't know because he's so athletic. He's so long and active. And Rick Stansberry underscored that when we spoke with him earlier today. And he really didn't know if he could go on Thursday against Louisiana Tech and not practice for a full week. Clean strip again. Hollingsworth has size, and he turns it over. Here comes the mean green. Reese rejected right into the shot blocker. Simmons, Gibson screaming for it. The double arrives, and they slow it up. What a defensive play. Oh, Reese should have thrown that one up for the lob for Simmons. Man. These teams are going at it, John. They know what's at stake. First versus second in Conference USA. A title could have be won here today. Simmons, triple team, kick to Reese. Three ball off, and Anderson, the one-handed rebound. Reese has been shooting the ball so well. I don't know about attacking off the shooter. If he passes in, if it's Reese, I'd like to see if they continue that strategy the entire game because he could get hot in a hurry. Western Kentucky slowing it down here. Rick Stansberry barking out the play. He told you Chris has had to make more adjustments this year than any in his career. Now, I've been knowing Rick a long time, and as a coach, I think this is the best coaching job you've done in your career. And he says one thing's for sure, I've had to change a lot of different things. And that's why he has the name, the magician. And there's a silly foul on Hollingsworth, 90 feet away from the basket. It's a one-point affair as one faces two. Mo Gibson has brought his A game, and we've got a tight one. You're watching March to March, presented by Smile Direct Club. Wow. Three huge days changed the complexion of this year for North Texas. Dang Goo, grad transfer from North Dakota State, says, I want to be part of the Mean Green. Thomas Bell, a late find out of Kaskaskia College inbound and Javion Hamlet who had verbaled to this program in between his two Juco stops made the decision along with the man he spent time with at the University of Buffalo in James Reese and Javion Hamlet's dad Lewis is in attendance today we asked Javion you talked about the floater right before the break Chris where did that floater come from he said well my dad always made me play up my first year of organized basketball I was eight I played 12 and under and that continued all the way through AAU. He was constantly playing kids much bigger, much faster, much stronger, much older. The only way he could score was to put up a floater. I mean, it makes sense to me. And, you know, those dads that, that love the game, that are involved in their kids' lives, they watch the league. 
And when kid starts off small, or you say playing up, he's got to learn how to get his shot off. And he knows how to get it off now because he has perfected the floater for sure. Well, here's the double as soon as they come across another wrinkle from Western Kentucky. Just, again, he's just going to, it's called a toothache. Just you know, give you a little hard time. You may not turn it over, but it's on your mind. And every once in a while, you'll catch him slipping and get a steal. It could be a game changer. Oh, Bell tried to fire that. Savage picks it off. Hollingsworth, who already has eight, Chris, behind the back to Savage. Yeah, he gets real comfortable. Don't want to get too loosey-goosey out there. They need to have an awareness of him and force a guy like Rawls, who played well against them the first time they played this game, but he hasn't been lately, John. In his last five games, two of 16 from three. Just 21% from the field. And Isaiah Kozar getting some surprising early minutes. Contested falling down. Anderson off. North Texas has it. Kozart only plays four minutes a game. Is he in there because of Simmons? Could be in there to put a big, a bigger body on him. Maybe to spell Carson Williams for a few minutes. He's matched up with the North Texas big man that Rick Stansberry said he believes might be the best in the league. Three ball, a little off, and that's a matchup to watch. A top 10 three-point shooting team of the country against one of the best three-point defenses in Conference USA. Kozart rarely plays. Rush that one some. Yeah, could have taken one more dribble, gathered yourself. He had Simmons in the air. He doesn't play much, John. You know, think about it. You're playing in a big game like this. It's tough for him. And that's probably going to be part of the reality come the conference tournament, right? Maybe a chance to sneak some minutes for a guy like that now. It is a chance, but here's my thing. The way these guys, they don't play that many players, but it's hard to bet against Rick right now. He has it rolling, but play that many games in that many days with that smaller lineup is tough. Draper on the drive, just got it off. No shot clock violation, turnover first. And Hollingsworth given a path, he gets hit, comes up clutching at his face. Is Hollingsworth okay? Now remember, Hollingsworth took a shot to the face in the conference tournament a couple of years ago. Wound up having a horrific game. Rick Stansberry wondering the health status of his superstar. Athletic training staff races over. He seems to be in significant pain, and they're looking at that eye. We'll step aside. We'll try to update his status. One point affair when we're back. Tavion Hollingsworth moments ago coming to his feet after he took a shot to the eye from Thomas Bell en route to the rack. Let's revisit the play. Player of the year candidate in this league. Good defense coming down. Got to go straight up. Easy call for the refs. Swinging down. Thomas Bell. Catching him in the eye. Now, Tavion Hollingsworth broke his nose two years ago during the season. Played the back half of conference wearing a mask. In the conference championship game, Western's been there the last two years and lost each of them. He rebroke the nose and was never effective. Finished 0 for 5, two points. How will he rebound? Already nursing a sprained ankle, suffered Thursday against Louisiana Tech. He's a tough kid, but you know, when you start messing with eyes, I don't right. know about the nose. I've never had my nose broken, have you? No. I'm sure it doesn't feel good in trying to play at a high level, but we'll see how he recovers. He's a tough kid, he's a warrior and hopefully for the good of this game that he can fight through it and continue to play well. And Hollingsworth has had a grand game so far. Neither team has scored in over three minutes. There's the first point since we were at double-digit minutes. And this Western Kentucky club down Charles Bassey, the All-American, broken leg, suffered in their biggest win. That was against Arkansas. And they are a thin group on the campaign. They also believe that Kenny Cooper, Lipscomb transfer, would have become eligible and get a an immediate waiver to play. The NCAA denied that. They found that out days after they lost Bassey. And a bad entry here. North Texas getting sped up some. They're switching the press. Usually the three-quarter court, one, two, two. Now they deny the inbounds. Catching the main green off guard. I told you, they're going to come in here. You talk about the pace of play. Western Kentucky is accustomed to playing any style. They can get up and down the floor, or they can play slow the way the game's going now. 
And North Texas has as many turnovers as it does made buckets. Carson Williams is back, and his banker is there. That's what he does so well. You're talking about read a scouting report. He's going to drive hard. He's going to come back with the left to try to finish. And you can know that all day long, but it's still tough to catch stuff to guard him. Staggered pressure. There's 1 2 2. Anderson at the front. Reese. Back to Goo. They have gotten very deep with their bigs against the back line of that pressure and found buckets like that. I mentioned it earlier about 52 points in the paint by Lai right. I think that's what they have to continue to exploit because the team in black, West Kentucky, can ill afford to get in foul trouble. And Rawls, who's been in a shooting rut, forced that one some with no one to rebound. Reese off great thing. Double, four shot, Savage, the rejection out of bounds. North Texas ball, 21 to shoot. But they're being very aggressive, 50-50 balls. If you ask me who the aggressor is, I believe you see Rick Stansberry getting after this group. West Kentucky's the aggressor. And Savage was the most vocal of the Hilltoppers leading up to this game. He called this a big opportunity. Best team in the league, so they say. We're going to North Texas with a big chip on our shoulder. We're going to take them dogs down there and see what we can do. The dogs, right? <laughs> Bullets and board material. Hamlet, the twisting effort. He'll glide to the line. Look at the foul to Rawls, his first. So this is the landscape at Conference USA, divided into three different groups in this 14-team league. The top five all play each other for their final four games. In many ways, Chris, it comes down to today. It does come down to today. And think about it, if North Texas wins, champion. If Western Kentucky wins, guess what? They have the tiebreaker. Now, they still have some work to do, but they have the tiebreaker. So this, this is a real big game, and it's, it's tight right now. I can't imagine what those last 20 minutes are going to be like. Western Kentucky has found itself in gaudy deficits all year, particularly in league. And it began with roaring back from down 15 to beat North Texas in the conference open. North Texas, full court pressure. You gotta punch the bullet, you gotta go back at them sometimes. Their pace of play and the way they play defense, they wanna force you out 28 feet from the rim. Watch this matchup down low. Williams isolated with Goo into the corner. Three ball roll. What they need. That is exactly what they need. That freshman needs to step up. He made three triples the last time they played. And you mentioned, Don, he's been terribly erratic. They need him. They need something from him this game. Reese thought about the response. Hollingsworth, the quick closeout. Seems to have rebounded well from the poke to the eye. Notice Josh Anderson is guarding him. Put a bigger guy on him. Out of the corner, three ball off, Savage the board. Rawls the survey. Wheeling. And out of bounds, who had last touch? It's going to be Western Kentucky ball. Fans don't like what happened. The young freshman Rawls from the three driving without the plan. You've got to have a plan when you jump in the air. Right? Young players out there, jump, stop, pivot. You can't get a shot off. Know what you're doing before you jump in the air. Into the corner, under six to go in the first. Savage, lead for Williams. They've wanted this matchup. See that spin move every single time. Great job there by Goo. Oh, what a fake hanging. And Hollingsworth is the master at drawing <laughs> fouls. The same thing. How does this guy get fouls? He is so good. This is one. You see that spin move. The scouting report. Goo is right there where he's supposed to. And here's our guy, Mr. Hollingsworth, with a shot fake. He's just really talented at getting fouled to the foul line. Hollingsworth connects tonight, 8 Eastern. Our season-long coverage of PBR continues in the city of Fountains. Don't miss the Caterpillar Classic from Kansas City, only on CBS Sports Network. Well, and Hollingsworth went off for 43 on Thursday. Part of the puzzle, he committed one personal foul in 43 minutes. He drew a foul 12 times. He hit more free throws than Louisiana Tech as a team. 19, he took 19 free throws and made 17. Like, I, 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 I cringe in my mind. I said, I don't think I've ever had a game like that in my life. And he does that stuff on the regular, John. Part of his game. Bell to Hamlet, who picked up that foul, his first, has a mismatch with Williams. So they're both these teams are switching. Got to get out there. Can't leave him. 
Bo Gibson with his second to make from deep. He's got six. Two point game, and Simmons ready to sub back in for North Texas. So you know that Hamlet wants to get in the lane, small, draw defenders, and kick it. Sometimes it's better to let him have the floater than to let three point shooters make shots. Collingsworth saw the seam, help from Goo, the high kiss miss, Williams the board, they never hit iron. Off the head fake, Justice four to shoot. Trying to wrap around Hollingsworth, they won't get it off, shot clock violation. Grant McCasland spent time in the offseason with Chris Beard and Mark Adams. The magic that helped Texas Tech rise on the national scene all the way to the championship game and a lot of the fingerprints of that defense are employed here now no doubt about it good job they're playing without fouling that's one of the keys as well north texas has to defend without fouling usually the hilltoppers will get low bumps and gets to the foul line there's our guy again they're going to have to find a way to guard him off those ball screens even up top in that iso you just cannot allow him allow him to take over the game but it's really tough because they have so many three-point shooters as soon as Anderson's out, that's when Hamlet just goes off, right? Yeah, as soon as he sees number three, the freshman, his eyes are going to light up. His pupils are going to be big as quarters. Like, I'm going right at this freshman. Just as crowd wanted to travel, step out of bounds, knock out of bounds. It'll be 12 to shoot when we return. JV on Hamlet showing a little Shakespeare-type action in the theater, in his home at the Ming Green. Knot it up. All tied at 25, the top two teams in Conference USA. Headed your way, AT&T at the half. Evan Washburn, John Rothstein in our New York studios. Get you caught up in a busy day in college basketball. All that and more on AT&T at the half. I know through the uh, the many videos I've seen on Twitter, John Rothstein is pumped that it's finally March. <laughs> now, the leap day got him there for a day, but... March is here, and it's magical. I talked to John the other day, and I'm upset I don't have one of those T-shirts, John. Do you have one? I think he, I think <laughs> there should be a John Rothstein, Chris Walker T-shirt. Oh, that what, would be fantastic. What would the saying be? Ooh, I'm going to think about that when we right. get back to you. We might have it at halftime. <laughs> so there is Rick Stansberry teaching Tavion Hollingsworth. This Western Kentucky team that embodies resilience. One win shy of its 46th 20-win season. North Texas trying to make it 20 wins for three straight years and take the outright conference crown. Ten to shoot as Hollingsworth glides across. Anderson is back. Williams screen. On a mismatch, he's got the big and Simmons. No chance. And he misses. Williams wins it. Anderson in straw high. Oh, you felt that coming, didn't you? <laughs> I said no chance that Simmons can guard Hollingsworth on a switch. Man, Carson Williams once again mopping up, getting those extra rebounds. Extra pass, share the ball. That's one of the keys to the dunk. He was so athletic. How many dunks did this guy get? And what, perhaps his dunk of the year came in the first matchup against North Texas when he made highlight shows around the country. Gibson. Coughs it up. A lot of turnovers in that high post. Numbers for Western Kentucky. alley and Savage rips the rim. Right away, quick timeout by Grant McCaslin. North Texas wants to talk it over. The Hilltoppers are firing on all cylinders up two possessions. Josh Anderson is playing on a bum wheel. Well, tell the rim that. <laughs> Again, we have seen a display of dunks from last game to now. Wow, John, you should be able to do that back in the day. Yeah. You can elevate <laughs> like that. Cleared for takeoff. Man. Now they've changed the pressure. Now it's Savage up front for Western Kentucky. It's changing the looks. Keep them off balance. That's what they want to do. Oh, well-timed rebound for Bell and one. Stansberry upset with Justice there, but that's what happened when a zone situation, there is no box out responsibilities. Somebody's got to find people coming to the rim and put a body on them. There's again, you can't, when there's athletes in the game like Thomas Bell, you just can't turn and just try to jump. They'll out jump you. And the foul goes to Anderson as his first. Bell 
the third most rebounds in America among non-starters. That's the impact he makes off the bench. You need a dirty work guy, a guy who doesn't mind being a stuck turnover there by Hollingsworth. North Texas turned the defense up. Oh, what a screen by Simmons. Hamlet to the rim. And Hollingsworth is yet to get up. Oh, my goodness. That was a hard shot. That was a hard foul. And usually what you tell the guy that's setting the screen is, man, to call the screen. But it could be so loud, he can't hear it. He's running to that screen. you got to yell that early and often. Ooh. Carson Williams, it looked like he was saying it, but he was whispering it. Simmons setting a tough screen, legal screen, shall I say. And remember, he only played 11 minutes, tweaked his knee, had foul trouble, was basically a non-factor the first time these teams met. That's when North Texas blew a 15-point lead when Western Kentucky authored one of the best second halves in college basketball this year to come back and win it pretty convincingly. Yeah, it was, that was at home, though. That was That's in right. EA Diddle. It was not here in the Super Pit. Free throw miss. Aggressive pressure. They are trying to beat up Hollingsworth a little bit, huh? They are trying to beat him up. They're changing defense the same way again. This is a chess match. Right? They know what's on the line. This guy here is fantastic. There's no reason to guard him that tight and push up. He's not an elite three-point shooter. Give him some space because what he wants to do is drive with that right hand, be athletic. Reese for three. Anderson the board. He's got eight points, some highlight dunks, some game-changing defense. Justice loads, rattles out. Got lucky. He made four triples the last game out. Talking to Coach Stansberry, he was the difference. They need a guy like Rawls, or they need Justice to do something huge like that man right there. Reese was calling for it, and Hamlet duped the defense. He slowed just enough before that beautiful pass. Yeah, they call that a lift up on the way. He comes off the screen. you got to guard the roll. The big going to the rim, and the shooter lifts up. Hard to guard. This feels like March basketball. Justice, well short, ugly miss. Yeah, tough one off balance. One of the best three-point shooters in the league. You got to let him take that one, but you wanted him to take it with rhythm and not falling away. And also remember, he's been battling back issues, a bulging disc in his back all year. Grant McCaslin is going crazy, imploring his team from the sidelines. Hamlet. Nifty move between the legs. Steamrolls Hollingsworth. Physical, strong finisher. That floater, they're going to have to close that lane off. And you see Coach Stansbury wants to talk it over. Timeout Western Kentucky. You got to run. We got to run. And North Texas intensely physical. It feels like a playoff game. Yes. The physicality has been extreme. You see Hamlet here almost getting a turnover, getting to the lane, being physical. He's a big, strong guard once he gets in there. There's really nothing Hollinsworth can do. And you got to make a decision strategy-wise. Defensively, if you're West Kentucky, are you going to take away the three-point shooters and allow Hamlet to have his way in the paint? That's going to be tough because he's a great finisher and he gets to the foul line, John. Had to replace Ryan Woolridge, who is North Texas's best player, point guard, who grad transferred. He's the starting point guard for Gonzaga right now, scoring 10 points a game. And they might be better. That's Tip hard. ball. <laughs> they got a chance to win the league, and it's hard to say what you, you might be better, but Hamlet, even talking to Coach Stansbury, says, has changed his team. What do you want here? Timer off. I'm going to keep the ball number three's hands. That's what I'm going to do. Get him, move him around, and maybe put him in the ball screen. Have him come back and get it and put him in the ball screen with Goo. He's defended by Justice here on the switch. Anderson, four seconds behind the back. Two seconds up and under with the left hand. Calvin, Jamie on Hamlet announcing his candidacy for player of the year in the game of the year and North Texas up five at the break. <laughs> Turkey, jerky, right, left, coming back with that left hand. He is lethal. He averages 14 a game. He's got 14 on Rick Stansberry's defense at halftime. And they definitely have to go in and talk about how they're going to guard that against an athlete 
Anderson doesn't want to foul. That's what West Kentucky doesn't want to foul. But I don't know. They're going to have to employ something a little bit different here against Mr. Hamlet. Coming up after the break, we'll send you back to our studios in New York for AT&T at the half. You're watching College Basketball on CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Mean Green, bye-bye. CBS Sports presents AT&T at the half. What's going on? Welcome to AT&T at the half. Tavion Hollingsworth with the lay-in. We're at the half between Western Kentucky and North Texas. North Texas up five. This is a big game in Conference USA atop the standings, John. No, it definitely is, Evan. Always good to be with you, my man. And, you know, one thing that's interesting is you start to think this time of year when you wake up in the morning, who could be an off-the-radar player from a mid-major conference that could potentially be a name to watch in the NCAA tournament? For me, Javion Hamlet is one of those guys. And if a guy is named Hamlet, that's definitely a play you can get behind if you're thinking about making something happen theatrically in the NCAA tournament. I see what you did there. <laughs> big day in the American, and we start with Cincinnati visiting Houston with a chance Chance to bolster their questionable tournament resume at the moment. Marcus Sasser with the three here for Houston. He's been a revelation for Houston as a freshman. Doesn't get a lot of attention, but a really good player. More separation here from Houston. That's Nate Hinton stepping into a three-point shot, making it a ten-point game. Defense going to try to create offense here. But that's Javen Cumberland, the cousin of Jaron Cumberland, knocking things down. More from Sasser pulling the trigger. Houston in control right now. This would tie them with Tulsa atop the American Conference standings. Ended the first half on a 13-1 run and have not trailed since. USF taking on Temple earlier today right here on CBS Sports Network. Justin Brown from the wing in the three. Yeah, dangerous team the Bulls are. You look at what they've done recently. Won at Memphis, played Houston very tough. Quinton Rose going to nail a triple right there to give Temple a four-point lead. But more here from the Bulls inside. Strong finish right there inside by Michael Durr. Brian Gregory and company go to Philly, get a cheese stick, and a win. Not a bad Sunday. Absolutely. The Bulls get the win. Justin Brown with a team high 13 points and nine rebounds. And we look at the American standings, John. Houston and Cincinnati started the day tied for second in the conference. Your thoughts on where Houston is right now? Houston's the only team in the American Conference that's comfortably in the field of 68. As a matter of fact, I think Houston is the type of team that could break open a bracket in the NCAA tournament. You were on the call sure. two years ago when Houston nearly beat Michigan in the round of 32. This team, to me, has similar requisites. They're not as good as the team a year ago that had Galen Robinson obviously Armani Brooks and Corey Davis in the backcourt but this team's still capable of winning two games in the NCAA tournament they seem very comfortable in that environment when we return we'll catch you up on some highlights including number 10 Creighton facing St. John's in a battle and Xavier looking to give their tournament resume a boost as they face Georgetown we'll get into it all next Sunday fun day of hoops great games coming your way this afternoon at 4 Eastern over on CBS. We head to the Big Ten for a classic rivalry number 19 Michigan facing number 23 Ohio State and here on CBS Sports Network you'll see a couple of CAA teams Towson and Northeastern the Huskies won the conference tournament a year ago. Let's get back to the highlights Xavier and Georgetown facing off right now on CBS Paul Scrubs finds Kiki Tandy for the three. Xavier comfortably in the NCAA tournament trying to improve their seating. Georgetown now thanks to this guy, Terrell Allen, has been a revelation in sports year under Patrick Ewing. Paul Scruggs stepping into a triple. I made it 21-10 in favor of Xavier. More from the Hoyas. Good pass by Jawan Blair inside. Georgetown hanging tough, again, despite limited resources today. Yeah, down two of their top scorers. St. John's and Creighton. This is a bit of a shocker. Creighton coming in as one of the hottest teams in the country, John. Yeah, but Creighton did not have a good day shooting the basketball. Mitch Ballack missed that layup that kind of summed up things on the day. And then St. John's really broke things open in the second half. Greg Williams stepping in for a three. Not just once, but then another time in the corner. St. John's breaking things open at Cornisek Arena. And LJ Figueroa going to get on the action. With the loss, this means that Seton Hall can clinch an outright Big East regular season title on Wednesday night if the Pirates beat Villanova in Newark. 20-point win for the Red Storm, having beaten a top-10 team at Carnesecca in over a few 
decades, but obviously the attention is on Creighton here. Just a blip on the radar, or is there cause for concern, big picture, when it comes to the Blue Jays? I caught up with Greg McDermott last week, and he had told me that because Creighton doesn't have a dominant presence on the interior, this team is susceptible to losing if it doesn't shoot the ball well. Just 4 of 27 from three-point range as a team in this game. Entering today's game, Creighton's three top scorers, Mitch Ballack, Mark Zagorowski, Tyshawn Alexander, were all better from 40 from three. Yeah, the three was the concern. Let's check in on the Big Ten, Indiana at Illinois. And we start the first half here, Devontae Green from way downtown. Shooter such, that's a good sign for Indiana who has struggled to shoot on the, on the road. Allen Griffin gonna take it to the 10 for Illinois to tie things up at 14. And there's Georgie Bashanishvili. Little dribble handoff to Io Desunmu with the floater. Illinois in control by four. Good game right now in the first half. Just another day in the Big Ten. An important one for Indiana looking for its yes. first NCAA tournament appearance in four years. St. Louis at Rhode Island, Rhode Island also on that proverbial bubble jump. Yeah, St. Louis, a sneaky good team here, Evan. You see Hassan French all over the offensive glass. St. Louis has played well. Yuri Collins in transition. The kick back to French for the dunk. This is the type of team that could be a bid stealer at the Atlantic 10 tournament. Coming up in a couple of weeks, your URI has Dayton looming on Wednesday night. That game will be on CBS Sports Network. They can't stub their toe here against St. Louis. So down seven at the half is Rhode Island currently in the field according to Jerry Palm but definitely on the bubble some scores around CUSA as we get set for second half action between Western Kentucky and North Texas John in, in this second half uh, of this game again these are two teams competing yeah. for that top seed heading into the conference tournament well and Western Kentucky's story is pretty amazing and they still control their own destiny right now for a conference USA regular season title but think about right now how the ceiling has changed for Western Kentucky this season. Charles Bassey was expected to be an All-American caliber big man. He's obviously lost for the year with a knee injury. The Hilltopper is still very much in the picture to win the Conference USA regular season title outright. You look at some of the other scores here. Old Dominion up on FAU and FIU in a close one with Charlotte. But getting back to Western Kentucky, this team under Rick Stansberry has done everything except get to the NCAA tournament. They can take a step towards that direction by winning the regular season title. Got to come back on a very good and very well-coached North Texas team though in the second half. Yeah, and a challenging place to play. Second half coming up after the break. John Sadak and Chris Walker have it for you. Enjoy the second half, everybody. Thank you for watching AT&T at the Half. When the overalls are out, <laughs> it's super serious. It is a huge game at Conference USA. One battles two. If North Texas wins, outright conference champs. If Western Kentucky wins, tie at the top. They control their own destiny. John Sadak, former Texas Tech head man, and Chris Walker, your takeaways from that first? I thought West Kentucky came out with great energy asserting themselves, but the physicality, Grant, Grant McCaslin had his crew ready to go, and they start delivering blows, and this thing changed right away. You see coming down there, Bell hitting Hollinsworth in the eye, and it's just been one of those halves. Simmons setting that screen. You got to call that out. That's your best player. And here's again, my guy Hamlet on stage doing his thing. It has been the difference in this game. Well, Hamlet already with 14. That's his per game average. His career high is 27 threes. The mild difference in a five point difference. I mean, the, the thing that sticks out to me is the free throws. I mean, West Kentucky needs to get to the line, but you saw that shot at halftime. How Hamlet came right by us. He said, It's my house. They know what's at stake here, and these guys are playing. So how do you adjust? Bottom line is West Kentucky has to figure out if they're going to leave shooters or they're going to pack that lane and not allow Hamlet to get in there. And then on the other side, what uh, the Mean Green have done so well is play without fouling because that is one of the biggest parts of West Kentucky's offense is getting to that foul line. So those extra points they aren't getting right now. Normally a giant part of the puzzle. So it is North Texas ball to spark the second. North Texas hasn't won an outright regular season conference title in over 30 years. Have to go back to their Southland days. Back-to-back -back champs in 88 and 89. That is a long time. That is unbelievable. Great university, great area. 
in Dallas, the Metroplex. Bo Gibson, this very patient offense, works time, and Anderson knocks it free. Williams running with Goo. Good and job, by the good, good job on the say by the mean ring getting back because that looked like that was going to be another dunk by Josh Anderson. Anderson runs in line. Savage surveys. Anderson wins to bit. He's hopping some now, favoring that foot. And we'll see as time goes on. Carson Williams, that's what he does. Got to finish though. Out of bounds. North Texas ball. Talk about again the adjustments. Really wasn't a, a, an adjustment so far because they've done a great job of it. Continue to guard without fouling. You see Will, Will, Williams wheeling and dealing in the lane, and Goo doing a good job of not putting him on the foul line. And there was the surge, 11 to 2 to end the first half. And a bad turnover. It's eight giveaways for North Texas already. And Hollingsworth looked like Deion Sanders on that <laughs> pass. I'm watching from our angle. He saw it the entire time. Man, it's like reading a bad quarterback. Look at Hollingsworth just, just right there. He's on it. He's on it, and he is off to the races. Prime time. Of course, Conference USA's tournament is held at the Star, the newer practice facility for the Cowboys in Frisco, and Hollingsworth twirls and buries it. For the who? Did you say my guys again? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the obligatory Chris Walker <laughs> Dallas Cowboys reference. The Star, baby. Put your heart and your car in the hands of that man that wears the Star. Everyone knows that. You didn't know that? Our director, Dan Regan, asked an insightful question if you had genuflected at the <laughs> complex. <laughs> ah. Goo. Three-point shot, they give it to him. Now he pounds inside, showing off his move. Dang, good. That's smart. It's not your strength. Drive the ball. You have a size advantage over Savage. You have to foul out last game. Probably does not want to be as aggressive. Anderson, a little short. Well, they played off of him, John. They're not going to allow him to drive, get that head of steam where he can use his athleticism. Reese, outstanding shooter. This North Texas team can bring it. Anderson, a little handsy, fouls Hamlet. And that'll be two on Josh Anderson. Yeah, there's no reason to do that. Just stay in the stance. You see Goo just backing him down, being patient. Savage, their best block, shot blocker. Can't block his shot. He's too long. Just being smart, just being a smart player, take what the defense gives you. They're open for a reason. That means you can't make them. They usually don't leave good players open around the three-point line. Magoo the bobble. They give him space. Gibson harassed by Hollingsworth. Single digits on the timer. That doesn't bother North Texas. They do this by design. Hamlet with one on the timer. Off iron rebound. Goo in second line. See, if Anderson, number four, is a, can stay in front of him, everyone needs to stay at bay and box out. There's no reason to help let Anderson use his length to defend him. Simmons with help from Anderson, knocks it loose. Seven to shoot, no possession exchange. Goo was open and he didn't see him. Reese with three to shoot. The twisting end line, Jay, off, and Simmons wins it. Another life. Hamlet giving the three. Crowd was shredded to erupt. You know, Simmons hasn't made it. A ton of, he had a ton of effect on his game, but he's been a steadying force with that size inside. Hollingsworth can feel the bumps coming, snaps it off to Anderson. Williams off the fake. Hollingsworth slams to a stop, cutting Anderson, beautiful. Goo just lost to get play, your, see your man, see the ball, have your head on a swivel, turn his head for a second. Gosh, Anderson's so athletic, sprinting to the rim. Can they get the stops? Can they get the boards? Size of North Texas has been an issue. Reese, quick release. Now part of the plan for North Texas, when we spoke with Grant McCaslin, he talked about the ability to see early threes don't take that good but not great early look. Yeah, it's patience, and you know, once they throw it inside, Simmons is one of the better big passing bigs, I would say, in the country. He can get it out, and sometimes he turns it over on, when he gets double. But when they reverse the ball like that to that corner, West Kentucky, they're content to give that up. you got to knock that shot down. And North Texas can show the numbers, and it's true of most teams in America. 
when they have a paint touch before the ball is out, the shooting percentage goes way up. It's called inside out. And the other thing is, that, that's what I say, I, the comment I made about him being a really good distributor and facilitator, very gifted when you have a big that's a willing passer. Bell off the bench, immediate impact. Hollingsworth, he's carried Western Kentucky all year, and he continues this afternoon. He said, you guys do not question my toughness. I'm going to show you guys how tough I am. I can make tough baskets in the paint. Gibson. Down the lane. Nobody defends. Ole defense. That paint is going to be wide open. At some point, they're going to have to tighten that deal up as the game goes on. But great job by Mo recognizing it and getting to the rim. We saw that a lot Thursday in Bowling Green. Williams on high. Three ball swish. Talking about an equalizer. And here's the pressure from Western Kentucky. All game long. Every once in a while, they may steal a possession and get a steal back into their man. Trying to shorten the game a bit, keep them out of foul trouble, and maybe again, that you can steal a turnover. Well, Simmons wants the high-low. He's trying to seal Williams. Giving up a lot of size there. Nine to shoot. Smart on a dime. More and more jumpers from North Texas. And Smart just got in the game, too. Like, move the, game, move the ball around a little bit. Run up and down a few times. Get the ball to Reese. Get it to Mo. Mo hasn't been involved in the game this half so far. Collingsworth down the lane. Gets foul. That's part of his magic. Well, back and forth they battle. Carson Williams called upon by his head man to hit threes. Mo Gibson, more problems. It's March to March, presented by Smile Direct Club. Let's see who stepped up their game today. Brought to you by Werner Ladder. I mean, it's Mr. Hamlet, of course. This has been his stage so far, Don. Once he gets to that left hand, it is good night. He can finish, takes you around ball screens. They have done a much better job this half, but the first half, he was all business, and he was giving them the business. And so Tavion versus Javion. This is a game, Chris, that not only can determine the conference champion, it can determine the player of the year. It could determine the coach of the year. And these are the two shining bright stars. They certainly are, other than Javon Jackson at UTSA, who's second lead scorer in the nation. I think these two guys are the primary for that. And as you mentioned, these two coaches. You all due respect to Javon. The team hasn't had the year. They haven't. No, they haven't. And, but the bottom line is, is that these two guys, the winner to the victor of spoils. And how about that move right there? Talking about spoiled. They have a guy that can shoot threes and drive with that type of authority and finish, John. He's a nightmare mismatch. Now the double team, smart, having trouble, finds Gu. Sharp dribble, loses the ball out of bounds. 16 to shoot. They, they're, they're great, playing without fouling. Talk about teaching points, which you want, you tell your players, the guys that do the trapping don't get the steal. You allow your, your interceptors to do that, and great job by Savage coming to taking that easy basket away. Neither team is led by more than six points. It has been tight. There have been many runs and prompt timeouts that have quelled the threats. Hamlet, the double there. He twists and falls away off. Hollingsworth has it. It's a little bit more awareness. Before, there were no bodies. He's getting the floater up. He wanted contact and turns it over. I think those guys saw the graphic. They're going at each other, John. Hamlet, that was denied partially by Anderson. Another rejection and a foul as Williams tried to take it away from Goo. Carson Williams is first. You got to give the credit to Hamlet because he's putting so much pressure on them. He's getting to the rim in transition. No one there to box out Goo. Points straight to the rim, rim running, and hit an opportunity to be two at the line. Well, Goo struggles at the stripe, 58%. The Gatorade Player of the Year in South Dakota. His family's from Sudan. His parents fled, granted the you know, large travesties of humanity happening there, and they found some safety in Uganda and then moved to the United States when he was six years old. He was able to enroll in first grade, pick up the language at a young age. Wow. That young man has a tremendous story. We're talking about college players being spoiled. That young man, no, no being spoiled there. It's a great university now. It has been a tightrope walk north of Dallas. 
Hollingsworth. Electric today. So smart. Four white jerseys around him. Johnny, so smart. I was talking about the adjustment of how to guard Hamlet. How about now? I need to flip that to the other side of the floor. They need to have an adjustment on how to guard Hollingsworth. You got, you got Rawls out there who hasn't made a three. Savage who hasn't been quiet as well. Why you want to just shut, you know, close that lane off? And here Savage tried to close the lane. He picks up his second foul. A couple of subs lying in wait for North Texas, the best shooter in America who hasn't been much of a factor on the left, 55, D.J. Draper. He wears 55. He's shooting 55% from three. Mo Gibson set to come in as well as Bell at the line makes good. Those are Chris Walker-type percentages, John. I, said, I used to let it fly. <laughs> Coach Massimino, God rest his soul. I used to give him the fence because, you know, if I touch it, John, it was going to go up. But this young man, he can really shoot the ball. Coaches in his family, huh? Mom and dad, both coaches. He originally a walk-on to North Texas. And he's now on scholarship. Does not have a bucket. He's 0 for 1 so far in this game. And all he does is shoot threes. One made shot inside the arc all season. Hollingsworth, corner, three ball, Justice. Hits heel, weak side Anderson fouled by Draper. Man, he's the guy, Josh Anderson. He is just like everywhere. Go, go, gadget rebound. Go, go, gadget dunk. He just, he gets every single little 50-50 ball. Somebody's got to box him out. Those, those John, those second, those every one of those possessions in tight games like that, extra possessions add up. Oh, alley-oop on the entry and Goose size. Met him in the air and a foul. Crowd doesn't like it. Goose got his first. Foul starting to pile Fouling up here up. now. Yeah, you see Rick Stansberry pointing. Like that was a call by him going to the rim. Goo had his back to the rim. And usually the guy that's guarding, even though uh, Hamlet's a smaller guy, you want to make sure you have to force him to throw it out towards half court or throw it to the corner, nothing to the rim. Let's give Rick Stansberry kudos for that call. But Williams got to step up and knock these free throws down. Western Kentucky shoots just under 80% of the line. Best at Conference USA. Today, the team is 4 of 8. On the road, that's what it's called, John. Being on the road, the confines of home are not the same. But they're starting to get to that foul line, though. Team fouls now 4 and 3 on entry. Gibson, call timeout. On the tumble, Rick Stansberry wearing a smirk. He was on bent knee, insisting that he was out of bounds. And Rick's getting in a stance. If to watch out, he's starting to get fired up. We know it's a stake. Rick Stansberry, they're putting that press on the Hilltoppers, keeping it tied up on the road. You're watching March to March, presented by Smile Direct Club. The top two teams in Conference USA, their second meeting. This is part of bonus play, the pod system. I like it. The top five teams grouped together, facing each other. Locations for the games determined by a computer formula. And it comes down to this. North Texas wins. They are the Conference USA outright regular season champs. They're assured of at least the NIT. In terms of the big dance, you believe these will Did be you the pick final those four. or I picked those? Because three of those guys lost yesterday. That says Chris Walker. I, I don't have the well, I'm going to blame the producer then. Because I, <laughs> I, and I can't believe I have Seton Hall. I'm a Villanova guy going to the Final Four, but they have played unbelievable. Maryland, I mean, it's Coach Turge has done a tremendous job. Scott Drew, and a disciple. Grant McCaslin, a disciple of Scott Drew, talking about that man-to-man -man defense. And I just believe that Florida State, Leonard Hamilton, this is his year. But anybody can lose, John. Think about yesterday. How about the nice steal? And they give it right back. Gibson and company with some numbers on the break. They're looking really shaky against the press. And I thought in the first half they were being a little tentative and playing on their heels. And it looks like it's coming back. Now Malene Bell changes hands and finishes over Savage. I think that might be an emphasis. You saw Goo take Savage down to the to the paint and scoring Bell doing the same thing. They're going right at Savage, which is who's one of the better defenders, which is surprising. Justice battling back woes. Collingsworth close out quick from the larger Hamlet. Difficult shot, Reese pinball. Hamlet's got it. 
JB on Hamlet to Goo, drop step, coughs it up out of bounds. Who has it? It'll be North Texas ball. It has been nip and tuck. You got a feeling it'll come down to the final minutes. Bonus play in Conference USA has meant some brilliant finishes. How about Day Day Bracey, the off right hand running winner to take down North Texas the same day. Charlotte at Western Kentucky, the rear road win in Bowling Green to Jordan Shepard connects. And what an effort. Tavion Hollingsworth, the three ties the game. Western Kentucky did not know a lead in regulation, rallied from down 17 with five minutes to go to win it in overtime. And Judy McLeod, Commissioner of Conference USA, we had a chance to spend some time with her before the game today and asked her about bonus play. She said she believes that it's producing what they want it to, opportunities for the best to play the best, to improve their stature, not only for seeding in the NCAA tournament, but also for seeding and bids in the NIT. Absolutely, and unfortunately, I hate to say this phrase of one bid league, because that's what no one wants to hear, but it is. you have to put yourself in a situation where you can get multiple bids, and that's what this pod system is for. And again, it's not just that. Now that they change the rules of NIT, it's effective, as you say, of getting multiple bids in that as well. Hamlet sealed off end line, snaps it to Gibson. A terrific defensive job by both teams, recovering when it looks like there's a, an easy basket. What a war between Williams and Simmons on the curl. Oh, and Simmons cleans it up. Yeah, Carson Williams, he had Hamlet walled off. When he started to retreat, Hamlin gets, you gotta, you gotta commit to trapping, or you either gotta go under the screen and you gotta force Hamlin to make threes. Simmons said, Western Kentucky, the only team I haven't beaten yet. It's time to go get one. None of these mean green players have beaten Western Kentucky. Neither is their head coach, who's 0 4 against Rick Stansberry. Behind the back, Anderson. Wow. How about that? What a pass by Williams. Oh my goodness. Oh, wow. <laughs> Baby Gronk. I mean, just <laughs> <laughs> what is it that he can't do? Drive, shoot, behind the back. And now you can feel the pacing. Is this deliberate from North Texas? I mean, it's just the way they play. They want to get the shot that they want. They got the, the ball in the, in the hands of the guy they want to make the play. Oh, Simmons was screaming for it. Done, that, done. that's happening because they're, it's the alertness, it's, it's the attention to detail that you have to play to handle. And there's his dad, Thomas, watching him play for only the second time ever. Fantastic moment, that is. He's got to be a, a proud papa. Collingsworth. He's got Hamlet. Right to the rim. Banker, good, and one. Not believable. Just relentless. So now, not only does he get points, not only does he go to the line, not only does he add another team foul to North Texas, Hamlet gets the personal. Exactly. It just If Hamlet just would have kept his hands up and not come down with his hands, and there they are, they're taking advantage of the double team that Hamlet is drawing and making quick passes and involving Simmons in the game. These two guys are going back and forth. They're going, they should be the guys, again, with 10 minutes to go for the league championship on the line. Put the ball in the hands of your best players and let them make plays. And one free throw, 20 points for Tavion Hollingsworth, and three fouls on JV on Hamlet with 10 minutes to go. So that would run that wheel action, get Hamlet chasing you again, and have a straight line drive to get to the rim. And hopefully the ref blows the whistle, because if he goes out of the game, it's a completely different game. Reese, the shooter. Williams clutching at his right knee and limping noticeably. Floater in the lane for Hamlet. And it's just attention to detail. You can't have Cameron Justice. They're, they're, they have so much attention to detail that everyone else on the floor. That's only one guy you need to worry about. That's number three. My bad, number 11. <laughs> it is a back and forth backcourt battle. 22 for Hollingsworth, who had 43 on Thursday when he carried his club to a win over Louisiana Tech. Funny, I was just going to say that if I was uh, West Kentucky, I'd put a little zone out there. Keep him out of the rim. Oh, How about that strip. Oh, my goodness. The senior silent assassin, John. And Savage, defense to offense, hits heel. Williams wins it. Lee for Savage. Hammer, no call. 
Great, great defensive play. Rick Stansbury's jumping up and down. He was verticality as well, but tremendous job by Simmons. Gibson off, Bell. Acrobatic putback. And Rick Stansbury is irate. Well, he's not happy about that, but if he was inside the, the, the restricted, he might have a a case, but no call, and this crowd is getting into the game here. Williams stepping back. Not bad. <laughs> wow. How well does these coaches know their game plans and what they need to do to win? He expressed to us the importance of Carson Williams making threes. Reese air balls a three. Bell weak side rejected by Anderson, who wins the loose ball. And now it's Grant McCaslin desperately crying for the foul. Oh, the Euro. Bad shot. He had Justice wide open in the corner for a wide open three. Share the basketball. Good job defensively. You've got to kick that one. I love that graphic. Six ties, eight lead changes. Neither team has had a more than a two possession lead. It has felt like a championship game. Yes, it has. Simmons wants it. He's been taken over. The double comes. Bad pass. Tipped and stolen. Just got to stay with your game plan. The game plan is to. Oh, look out. Get a little sloppy. But you know what? Those are guys playing hard. They want to win. Not can... enough. 55 55. It's going to come down to the last seven minutes and 26 seconds. And we may have a champion. Let's take a look at today's Smile Direct Club transformative play of the game. You see Carson Williams here. Looks like he's holding his leg coming out. This knee, I'm sorry, looks like he's holding it and ah, maybe there's something wrong. These guys, you know, they've been the mash unit all year long trying to figure it out. But you know what, John? That might have been a pump fake because he comes down the next possession and bangs a three. These guys have been road warriors, and they've had to fight through a lot of things. But this kid here, I've said a ton of times, they got two football players at West Kentucky that played basketball. He might be the next one. 16 points, three made threes. And how about this wrinkle, by the way, with this game tied at 55? North Texas is one of the best outside shooting teams in the country since halftime, 0 for 3 from 3 against Rick Stansberry's defense. Well, they're the best. They're one of the best defensive teams in the country. Guarding the three ball was one of my keys, I thought, to the game, that they had to really do a great job of guarding that line and give Hamlet number 3 credit. He's done a good job of taking that away. And number 55, Draper, he hasn't been able to be in the game. There's, there's too many athletes out there. They're definitely not going to allow him, you know, a, a guy who doesn't take any twos to come in and make a shot. And then if he comes to the game, you know what West Kentucky is going to do? They're going to go right at him defensively. He's 0 for 1, entered leading the country 55% from deep. Ken Pomeroy has called him the most efficient player in America. Well, number, numbers sometimes can lie, John. You know, at the end of the day, if they see number 55 come out there, trust me, they're going to run a play and force him to defend. Hollingsworth denied Anderson. Stepping back over Goo. <laughs> Bell's got it. Foul on the floor. Good job, Bell. They're a savage just on the rim, being a savage. And Hamlet looks stunned from that contact of the tumble. And that's going to be a foul on Hamlet. He's got four fouls, so Draper to the table. Does Hamlet. Very key. See it again. You see Savage going to the rim, doing those small things. That offhand by Savage, I don't know. I mean, he gave the foul to, to Hamlet, but wow. So he's out. Draper's in. In a tie game, circle this moment. Williams muscling in, help from Bell. Anderson steps into a three. Wow. They just figure out a way, John. It's not what he does, not his strength, but what can't he do? How about that? Josh Anderson hadn't hit a three since January 25th against Marshall. It's what it takes. Coach says he's going to take something special, right? That's that's something special. Back-to-back -back games, he's been brilliant coming off injury. The crowd eerily silent. They seem stunned and flat. Three ball, Draper, no. 
And Western Kentucky's got its first lead since two minutes to go in the first half, but it was 31-29. Amazing, you know, you're talking about the magician finding a way. It's a crucial possession. Look who's guarding. Look who's going right at him. Just like I said, the minute they saw him, they were going at him. Oh, and Anderson writhing in pain, and Hollingsworth gets flung into the upright. And Anderson is not in good space, good space right now. It looked like he hit his hip. He was flying in there with reckless abandon for a tip dunk. Well, this has been incredibly intense. Stansberry's not happy. And John Irwin, athletic trainer. It's been a challenging season. It's been a wild day. Oh, yeah, he just legs got from under him. And a guy who jumps like that, a one-foot jumper. Good defensive play. It just, you know, it's, just, it's a basketball play, John. It happens. So he's getting massaged and examined on that left hip and side area. Remember that Western Kentucky is painfully thin. They basically play six guys. Yeah, they play six guys, and they've had, had, they haven't had any issues chemistry-wise. And this guy here talking about how he would have helped this year. The All-American Charles Bassey lost with a broken leg, suffered on December the 7th against Arkansas, the best win for Western Kentucky this year. It came at grand expense. And now Rick Stansberry is running an impromptu huddle. I was about to say, he's getting a little timeout, right? Yeah. <laughs> He's offering words to his team in huddle surrounding Anderson. Hollingsworth seated at his side. And uh, you're paying for that, young man. You see Grant McCaslin. He's trying to steal something, too. And Anderson able to come to a seated position. He's the highest-ranked recruit that Western Kentucky's had in years. Consensus four-star, top 60 in the country. Did not get cleared his freshman year. Until the first week of January, he was behind some in academics his senior year of high school, had a death in his family, flood damage to his home, miscommunication for makeup work. Unbelievable. He's had a challenging career, and you know, he had the toe injury, kept him out of practice last week, and now here, finally helped to his feet. And some of the fans get a little antsy because they thought Coach Stansberry, as you said before, was getting an impromptu timeout. But, you know, with the kid being hurt, he's walking okay now. But this changes the game, right? No so question. Hamlet just went to the bench with four fouls, highly impactful, and now Anderson's gone to the bench with injury. That is, but the one thing that's key, though, obviously the number 55 Draper, if I was them, I would put him on number five justice, but if he guards Hollingsworth, Hollingsworth's going to go at him all possession long. That's going to be the mismatch you've got to watch. Good news, a broad smile just displayed by Anderson, so it looks like he'll be all right. And I would assume he may sub in. Rick Stansberry's all the way down talking to him now at the end of the bench. Three ball, rainbow miss, and still North Texas has not connected from deep since halftime. Let's work that clock. Let's work that clock. Let's see what they'll do. You see Jared Savage has number 55 Draper on him. Let's see if they go at him, but you know the ball's going to be in the number 11 hands. Here's Hollingsworth on a switch briefly. Goo hard screen picks off Reese down the lane right at Draper and Goo rejects on help. And Hollingsworth slow to get up numbers for North Texas. Reese all day. Bell weak side put back off. Goo can't handle. Wow. And a foul. Hollingsworth gets to the rim. Great no call by the refs. You got to give these refs some credit. Go with the block. And then on the other hand, they just missed two bunnies. And so bonus free throws have arrived. It's the first of the one and ones. Foul to Goo, his second. CBS Sports Network has a new show covering all the action on the green. Join Michael Breed as he tees off on the top headlines of the world of golf and gives his unique take on the game. Catch course record with Michael Breed tomorrow morning, 11 Eastern, right here on CBS Sports Network. Well, Javion Hamlet returns here, Chris, with 5-12 to go. Hey, if they get up to five here, you, you need him in the game for sure. And you just can't foul you, you're a big-time player. They need you in the game. It's better to give up a two, a whatever it is, but they need him to facilitate their offense. 
a ship without a captain right now. So he's back in with four fouls. North Texas hasn't scored in over three minutes. Cameron Justice at the line, who entered 13 points shy of 1,000. And he connects. His first points of the day. Be interested to see how they guard Hamlet off the ball screens. Anderson back in. And it's a turnover. Williams with Hamlet trailing in the jam. The knee looks all right. Hamlet had to play soft with four fouls. And we get a timeout. Six unanswered by Western Kentucky. Carson Williams launching, and the Hilltoppers up a game-high seven. An 8-0 run for Rick Stansberry in Western Kentucky. On the road at North Texas, the Mean Green first place in Conference USA. Javion Hamlet back in the game just before the timeout with four fouls. There's very little margin for error. This West Kentucky team is tough as nails. Talk about tough as nails number four. Josh Anderson's back in the game, guarding the best player from the Mean Green. North Texas only has one timeout left. Hamlet. See how they're guarding that ball screen. They're not going to allow him to dictate what happens the rest of this game. They're going to double him and force him to give the ball up. It's five to shoot. He gives it up, and Simmons flushes it home. Okay, you got to trap him. You can't allow him to yo-yo. You got to trap him and make him kick it, but not that way going downhill. First points for North Texas in three and a half minutes. Rolls the jump kick. Williams attacking Simmons. And a foul. And that was an easy call by Roger Ayers swinging down. And John, here's the deal. You're talking about the scout report. He's so dangerous because he makes a three. Simmons can't guard him. But they got to know when he drives right, he's coming back to his left. Somebody has to be there right as soon as he spins when he has his back to you. Someone should be there to get the steal and dig that ball out. Western Kentucky just 6 of 10 at the line. Another miss. There's a chance for this to be a double-digit game if they were at their Conference USA leading average. On the road, playing on the road. You see Coach Stansberry, one thing for sure, there's not gonna, there's not gonna be any quit in the Mean Green, but you're gonna live and die with every possession. So at what point, if you are the Mean Green, they roll entry here, by the way, do you start to speed up a little bit? Do you okay. start to increase tempo? Nah, plenty, plenty of time. You know, we still got the four-minute timeout. They just gotta make sure they get a quality shot every single time down. Bell, the corner three, and the easy rebound for Williams. So you talk about the beginning of the game, you're talking about Coach McCaslin, he didn't want him to shoot quick, but now maybe that might be biting them in the and, and biting them right now because they haven't been able to be comfortable and make those threes that they normally make. Keep in mind that Western Kentucky has ballooned this lead to maintain with Tavion Hollingsworth in the primary seat on the bench. Just two off the table, getting some much needed rest. Out of bounds, five to shoot. Hollingsworth almost assuredly will be back on the floor with his Hilltoppers up six. Western Kentucky on the road, up 63-57. Headed your way next, College Hoops coverage wraps up today with Towson at Northeastern only on CBS Sports Network. A big ball game. In the Colonial Athletic Association, the Tigers on fire of late. Winners in 12 of their last 15 and 11 and 3 in the CAA. Today, though, it's about how bad do you want it? No, no question about it. It's been a physical game, but you see the mean green. Hollingsworth early in the game, they were being very physical with him, hitting him in the eye. You see Carson Weavers grabbing his leg and Josh Anderson falling on that hip. I called Rick. Stansberry, the magician, but I got another word for him. He's an amazing cut man in the corner because sometimes when they go to the corner, they come back out. They're almost better than when they left. I mean, it is unbelievable what this man has done with five, six, maybe six players, John. John, I'm telling you right now, he wins this game. It's far from being over. He is the coach of the year, hands down. And they would need to win at FIU to cement the outright regular season title. Shot clock violation. Williams only hit glass. 
So three timeouts for Western Kentucky, one for North Texas. Western Kentucky is one mean green foul away from being on the precipice of double bonus. Western Kentucky has a lot of fouls to give. And North Texas has been rolling entry since before the media. Hamlet playing with four fouls. Picked up the fourth at the seven-minute mark. Came back at the 5-12 mark. Just look for number three to take the game over. Alley up and Bell adjusts. Yeah, that's one of their favorite plays, driving to the rim. Weak side corner, flashing in for the lob. I mean, really, if if, if I'm, and I know Rick probably won't do, Rick Stansbury probably wouldn't do this, I would deny Hamlet the ball every single time and force someone else to make plays. Collingsworth short, North Texas has it. North Texas, a supreme outside shooting team. They've not made a three since halftime. Bell again, cutting, rejected, and foul. Done. He's getting you're getting ahead of steam. You're getting a very good player with a head steam coming at you. There's no way, and he does a great job of changing directions. You can't get there in time. You're going to have to foul him. And so Bell finds himself at the strike. You no, know, Coach Stansberry is a wizard at changing defense, but he might want to play a little zone. Play a little zone to keep Hamlet out of the lane. That is where their offense is starting and ending with him making the plays. You cannot allow the best player, possibly the best player in the league, to dictate what's going to happen at the end of the game. You have to force the other guys to do that. And yeah, that said, in bonus play, really all year in Conference USA, we have seen the games come down with regularity. The Stars fall in the hand late, win or lose. You can say what they want, and there could be some critics of this, but it has certainly worked. Another turnover. Williams wanted the foul. Guja subbed in and makes immediate impact. Reese, Hamlet, Anderson guards and ball screen lying in away. Williams yep. ready for a switch. Hamlet hammered to the line with a chance to tie. I mean, I just, I mean, Coach Stansberry is a great coach. I just don't understand not trapping him, especially Goo setting the ball screen and forcing him. There's a turnover there, just bad communication by Justice in the angle. It just, I just don't understand not trapping him and forcing him to give the ball up. Or if he gives it up in the last 10 seconds on the shot clock, just deny him and not let him get it back and force Gibson or someone else or Reese to make a shot. 87% shooter, converts. Hamlet getting it done, trying to forge a tie. North Texas hasn't known a lead since it was 55-52 at the 8-17 mark. <laughs> 18 points for J.B. on Hamlet. He's turned it on. From West Kentucky, move that ball around that perimeter, get that that action going, and see if Tavion Hobbinsworth can get a switch and go right at Hamlet and get him out of this game. Williams on Goo, showing off the moves. A miss. Mean Green, a chance to claim the lead, riding a 6-0 run. I get the, what you're trying to do is go at game, Goo, but Goo has so much length on, on Williams. Why not give the ball to Hollingsworth and just let him get ahead of steam and try to get to the rim and make plays? This is his time of the game. Hamlet, seven to shoot. Wrapping around, Bell for the lead! And Western Kentucky. Three timeouts, you call one. And Grant McCasland is irate, meeting Bell at midcourt and barking out his commands. You don't want to miss the end of this. All even. <laughs> Western Kentucky has the ball, the arrow, at 1.15 to go. Tavion Hollingsworth assuredly will have the ball out of this timeout. I, one would think they're trying to exploit that matchup with Goo. I don't think they'll do that again. Get him the ball with a head of steam, and here it is right here. That's the difference, John. When we saw that game last time, he was getting to the foul line, hasn't been able to do that today. Hollingsworth, though, outstanding still, and he's been on the wrong side of 
intense physical play from a North Texas team that prides itself on toughness. North Texas only has one timeout. It looks like Reese is matched up with Hollingsworth here. Yeah, look for a little wheel action, move the ball around the perimeter, and then ball getting back to Hollingsworth where he can get an advantage drive and get to the rim. Western Kentucky hasn't scored in over three minutes. A de facto championship game in Conference USA. And he crosses it off, turnover! Great defense there by Goo and not fouling. Hollingsworth waved off the screen. There's no doubt what's going to happen here. Number three is going to make a play. I would blitz him and trap him. Let's see if Coach Stansbury made that adjustment. 8-1 run over nearly four minutes. Hamlin against Anderson. Up top, Gibson. He's been quiet. Eight to shoot. Hamlin with a calm pulse. Driving on Anderson. Bobble out of bounds. Western Kentucky ball. Shot clock turned off. Timeout. Rick Stansbury wants as soon as they get it across midcourt. You know, give Coach Stansbury all the credit. He has this long athlete, Josh Anderson guard him. He elected not to foul. <laughs> Hamlet driven that. They look like they want a review, but that's no question off of Hamlet. And they're going to take another look. Outstanding crew. There's Joe DeRosa, who along with Joe Forte, the only men ever to work the NBA Finals and the Final Four, alongside Tommy Short. Also on the crew, Roger Ayers, the veteran of two Final Fours. Let's take another look. This also gives him, you see, the might, might have got away with a foul there. Even Justice might have gotten away with a foul, but that's clearly off of Hamlet. And that's getting like a little timeout here, John. You know what I'm saying? Without, without calling the timeout. Talk strategy. 29 seconds. They're going to take the last. This is what this is the thing. You're taking the last shot. You're not allowing North Texas to get a shot off. So Rick Stansberry before that was saying get it across and call timeout. Does he still want that in your opinion? Well, it, it looks like they're going to trap him, which they're not. I would just let it play. It right. would be the same thing. Now, save that timeout because inside of possession, that may be a tie ball situation where it looks like it's going to be a tie ball, shall I say, and you may need a timeout if it's something that he sees he doesn't like. Shot clock turned off. Western Kentucky has the arrow. If the Hilltoppers win, they tie for first with North Texas and control their own destiny. I'm going to make a guess here and say they're not going to set a ball screen to allow him to get trapped and just let him go one for a low. But if anything, look for Savage setting the ball screen. Here he comes. Collinsworth against Reese. And he's fouled. And it's the last of the bonus free throws. It's the ninth foul on North Texas. And then think about what it did. It was a show and go ball screen. That's why it wasn't Carson Williams. He acted like he was going to set the screen. And he got it's almost like a little rub screen in football. And they're giving two shots here. They're saying in the act. So it's not bonus. Hollingsworth has two. The team has struggled at the strike. And he misses. Now, North Texas thought it was a one and one, and Goo grabbed the rebound. They have a timeout left. We'll see if they make this. Time went off the clock. They got to fix the clock because no time should have gone off. Matt McCaslin's going off. It's a two shot foul. He thought it was a one and one. Western Kentucky is 9 of 15 at the line. They add time to 5.6. North Texas has one timeout. We'll see if they go right away. They may call a timeout. Wow! Here comes Levine Green for the Conference USA Championship. Hamlet won't get it off. And a foul. They give a foul. It looked like time had already expired. Now it's not bonus. He said it was going floor? up, but let's see the time. Unbelievable turn of events here. We have to watch the clock. I don't think he was anywhere near the act and for the foul while it was still the game. It John. looked like the red light came on before that whistle came. John, forget about that. I know that's important. Tavion Hollisworth, one of the best free post shooters in the league, missed two free throws. Well, let's look at the clock. There's Hamlet. Point three, point two. Yeah, no yeah, doubt. There's, yeah, it's not even close. I mean, so it's overtime. Unbelievable. Oh, wow. And they, we get confirmation from Joe DeRosa. He says no foul. Overtime coming. The third and four games for a weathered Western Kentucky team. The champion to come after this.
with a championship on the line, North Texas and Western Kentucky. One and two at Conference USA. Overtime comes. It's the fifth overtime game for a thin Western Kentucky team on the season. Their third in four games. Team fouls carry over. Each team gets added a timeout. So Western Kentucky is three. North Texas has two. Team foul spill over. Nine on North Texas. So double bonus will favor Western Kentucky the rest of this game. And only five fouls called against the Hilltoppers. Mean Green still without bonus. What are your thoughts on that end of regulation and what we're looking for in overtime? Okay, first of all, my thoughts are if I'm Rick Stansberry and I got Tavian Hollinsworth on the line with five seconds, I'm winning the game. So now we'll see emotionally how they can come back from that. And if you're the main green, you got a, I mean, you got a new lease on life here at home. Remember, though, JV on Hamlet, four fouls. If he picks up one foul, he's done, and he's their most important player. I and mean, I would move that ball around, get him chasing, hoping they're switching. And I'm going to tell you, you got to watch out for He's been quiet the whole game. He's number two savage. Let's see if he can have an impact, especially if Hamlet guards him. If North Texas wins... The Mean Green, the outright Conference USA regular season champs. If Western Kentucky wins, they tie atop the standings and own the tiebreaker and control their own destiny. Hamlet turns it over, loose on the deck. Williams wins it and swings it out of bounds. Well, Carson Williams trying to make a pass. The bottom line is just hold on to it. They just had the possession. If you just have the jump ball, it's your, you have it. You got the possession. Why even try to pass it? Hamlin calls the break. There's got to be fatigue here, right? Even beyond overtime, just the stage of the year. And the fatigue and emotion as well uh, on both ends. Gibson draws the foul from Hollingsworth. For those of you tuning in for Towson Northeastern, you'll find it online, cbssports.com slash cbssn. As soon as it tips off, of course, we'll get you out there immediately after this game wraps up. John, talk about something that's key. You mentioned in the overtime, only five fouls. They're not in a bonus yet. And that is now the sixth. Two on Hollingsworth. Crowd has grown incredibly quiet for stretches when North Texas has had the ball. It's almost as if you can feel their anxiety and worry. They haven't won a regular season title outright in 30 years. And a foul on Hollingsworth. That's going to be seven. So Gibson, top five free throw shooter at Conference USA, the first of the bonus free throws for North Texas. Well, we saw what happened at the end of regulation. That may not mean anything. You start talking percentages. You got to start talking about at this point in the game, what are the percentages? Gibson converts all year. Western Kentucky has thrived in free throw disparity. They go to the line a ton. They pretty much don't foul. They outscore their opponents by nine at the line per game. Today, North Texas has been ultra efficient. Western Kentucky has floundered nine of 16. I'd really like to see Tavion Hollinsworth take this game over and make some plays. Williams thought about the three. Instead trying to drive on Goo. Jump in, Anderson. On the wing, Justice. Wow, how about that? Why would you leave him? That's his first made field goal of the game. Hamlet down the lane. Over Anderson and one. And that's just absolutely Anderson's driving. Make him make a shot. You don't leave him. Mo did a terrible job there of leaving one of the most lethal guys on the floor. And I've said it time and time again, you're helping on everyone else. The most dangerous guy is the guy with the ball, and that's Hamlet. He converts at the stripe. North Texas by two. Western Kentucky has been the comeback kid team all year. They've rallied from double-digit deficits multiple times in league play to win. Contested three ball, flat and off. Williams wins it. Second possessions. Hollingsworth. Rick Stansberry says set a screen. Yeah, they're doing a good job of keeping him in that bay. He gets to that right hand, though. 
Got a kick into the corner, had just as wide open in the corner for a wide open three. Bad force, handled it up the floor. Thinking about a conference title. One of the eight newcomers to this team. Preseason number seven pick in the league. Nobody a preseason all-conference USA team. See Bell not shooting that three. He shot it before. Hamlet barely kept his footing. Five to shoot. Bell has it knocked free. Here comes Justice. Right down the lane. Short. Hollingsworth hard denial. Williams wins it. On top. Seven. Wow. Did I call it a what? Unbelievable. I thought Savage was going to be the guy to make a shot. Savage being a savage in the most critical time. The silent assassin dropping rain making triple. We'll be back. It all comes down to this. Western Kentucky at North Texas. One point game in overtime. North Texas wins, outright conference champs. Western Kentucky wins, owns the tie break, and would head to FIU with a chance to take the crown. And nothing new for Western Kentucky and Rick Stansberry, tight games. No question about that. We just saw one of the last thing partner you and I did together when they beat La Tech in overtime. And here we are again, and Savage stepping up. The senior making a huge three. I just had that inkling, John, that it was going to have to be someone like him. But we'll see. And, and, I, and I talked to you in the break. I said, we got to see how they're going to guard number three in white. Hamlet, he has controlled the game. And you got to have a strategy because no one else is touching that basketball. For those of you tuning in for Towson Northeastern, you'll find it online, cbssports.com slash cbssn. As soon as it tips off, and of course, we'll get you out there immediately after the conclusion of this game. The North Texas has the ball. Western Kentucky has the arrow. Each team enjoys bonus. As Hamlet brings it up. The 1 2 2 action. Shorten that clock a little bit as they get across and they go, go, man. And as I've said before, let's see how they guard the ball screen with Hamlet. Anderson on him. Hamlet's got 21. Tavion Hollingsworth for Western Kentucky, 22. Looks like they're in a bit of a matchup zone here. Hamlet recognizing the defense. Justice off the bounce. Texas on top. Unbelievable. Again, he's just waiting for the opportunity. Coach Stansberry, better coach than me, but I'm trapping him every single time. He is not making a play. Collingsworth trouble with the handle. Oh, nice look. Williams rejected by Goo, and Reese has it. And the bench for Western Kentucky, despondent, the crowd thriving, standing here. North of Dallas, alley-oop again! Those Danbury tells them to slow down. John, that's what they do. They catch you staring, and those wings, they fly in for lobs. Timeout, Western Kentucky. They can taste the title in Denton. North Texas up three. Western Kentucky has the ball out of its call timeout, and this made for the latest margin. And you can't have any confusion coming off the screens. And I don't want to beat this dead horse, but we'll see, you know, what happens in the possessions going forward. Towson Northeastern underway. Available CBSSports.com slash CBSSN. Game's far from being over, though, John. Rawls has been on the floor much for a long time. Justice fell down, eight to shoot. One minute. Hollingsworth. Screen Williams. Leaning into contact. He wanted the foul, won't get it. North Texas has it. Shot clock violation. Now maybe that ankle has now come into effect. We talked about Hollingsworth's ankle. He has to be able to create separation. Is this a foul? Huh? Could be a foul. I'm sorry. He left his feet, not vertical. That's a foul. And now there's some disagreement between our officials here. Great crew, but I think that was a foul. We can't review if it's a foul.
but they're looking at the shot clock here. Was it a shot clock violation, I guess? Because that's what it seemed the near side official called. 53.3 seconds to go in overtime as it stands. I mean, I mean is that partner is there any? Yeah, it's a shot clock violation Definitely before he catches clock. it, right? But how about the foul, though? <laughs> I mean, you can't fly over. He's not going straight up. It's not vertical. It's foul. If that, if it was a foul at the end of ha at the end of regulation on Anderson, that was definitely a foul. So now with 53.3 to go, you're facing a North Texas team that is methodical by nature. They play one of the slowest paces. They have some of the deepest possessions in college basketball. When and how does fouling enter into your consideration for Western Kentucky trailing here? I mean, I wouldn't foul. You're going to get the ball back. You got to get stopped. That's the number one thing, you know. But I, I'm telling you this. I'm trapping number three. He's not making a play. Another look. Does that hit iron? And we get word from Roger Ayers. They were checking the clock to make sure with the shot clock and its effect on the game clock. Did they have it correct? And they confirmed yes, 53.3. Say veteran crew. I'm going to go out on a limb. On Twitter, I might be getting killed by the North Texas people, but I thought that was a foul. Bell having trouble. And a timeout right before a five-second violation. The timeout comes from North Texas. The last minute of overtime. It's been wild to this point. Can they top it? A luxury of a recent rule change. Coach is allowed to call timeouts from the bench when their team has the ball. Save the possession for North Texas. It would have been a five-second violation. Yeah, that would have been critical. And see the full court pressure by Western Kentucky. Still can't get it in, though. Wow. And they turn it over. Savage sweeping to the rim. Bucket. Unbelievable. This Western Kentucky team finds a way Still don't have to foul. Only one. It's only down one. You don't have to foul here. Hamlet with a head of steam. Slows the trailing bell back to Hamlet. About an 18 second differential here in a one point game. If Not. North Texas wins, they take Conference USA's regular season title. Hamlet. Uh, I, I, just, I just don't understand it. <laughs> and here comes Hollingsworth running the floor. Anderson draws the foul. Clock stopped, and a chance to make it a one-point game. And they come right back at you. I mean, I'm going to continue to talk about it again. That steal there, critical. Great finish there by Savage. And coming right back at you, you cannot give this guy angles. I don't think anyone else has touched the ball from North Texas in the last five minutes, but Hamlet, he has been fantastic. So here's Anderson, his first free throws of the day. 77% on the year. Talk about if he makes both free throws, he's still in a situation where he missed the first one. If he can make one, you have to get after him. Very Western good, yeah, very good free throw shooting team, I might add. Top no five in the country, and they are nine of 17 today. Twenty-six seconds. North Texas has not won an outright regular season conference title in over 30 years. They can do it with a win. And a foul on entry. Out of bounds on the contact between Hollingsworth and Hamlet. Well, wow, they're just having a hard time inbounding the ball. Coach Stansberry, he's watching. You know, he's got something in his back pocket. And they're going to go to the monitors here. I guess to determine who had touch here. Yeah, definitely got to check that out for sure. At this point in the game, the coach stands very going over, <laughs> pleading his case. The crowd is right on top of it. <laughs> yes. The two point North Texas lead. Ooh. I mean, that's been the game, right? Yes. These two guys going head-to-head. -head. 
and it's been that kind of bruising physicality. But who touched the ball last? Yeah, I don't know. Or Hollingsworth? It looks really tight. I like to have a, a different angle. There you go. Ooh. Oh, I don't know. If, that, if it's that quick, it's got to be North Texas ball. And they will say North Texas basketball. So North Texas has the ball. Western Kentucky has the arrow if there's a tie-up. That's who's on the floor. The free throw percentages, respectively. Got a trap. Got a trap. Got a foul. Got to make him give it up. Don't foul him now. Anderson's got four fouls. Reese. Smothered foul, 15.6. And look at Cameron Justice. And Reese, who's not gone to the line a ton, but he is great. 96% entering today. One miss in 22 tries. 15 seconds on the clock changes the game. The landscape. We'll see if he can knock these down. First free throws of the day. And he converts on the front end. It's double bonus, both teams here on in. A critical free throw to make it a two possession game. John, we, we've seen this with Western Kentucky. Even if he makes this, if they can sprint the ball down and get a quick two or three, it's still a game. Free throw make. Here come the Hilltoppers, down four. Number four, Anderson down the lane. Off, rebound, loose, Anderson. No, Reese has it. No foul. It comes with 1.1 1 .1 on Hollingsworth. Wow. And they know it's a matter of 1.1 seconds. North Texas is going to be the champ. Unbelievable turn of events. Great job not fouling. Verticality going up. You can't see the scrum inside there, but Bell and Goo have been the difference, not allowing them to finish at the rim. Give that guy credit. He has changed the culture and brought home a championship for the Mean Green. And a sub for Western Kentucky. Classy move. Student manager Evan Stack makes his collegiate debut and gets his first minutes. He was just awarded a jersey. In the last week, he enters the game. Hamlet. Hamlet controlled this game. I'm, I'm going to agree with the crowd. MVP chance. This might have sealed it for me. And he just did a tremendous job of wheeling his team to victory today. Grant McCaslin inherited a program that lost 20 games in back-to-back -back seasons. In year number three, it's the first regular season conference title in over 30 years for the Mean Green. Unbelievable, John, and talk about the great job. Spending time with him yesterday, and this is the time. You talk about his guys not getting caught in the moment. They can definitely get caught up in the moment right now. And number three, Mr. Bramley got it done. North Texas will be the one seed in the conference tournament. For Chris Walker and our entire crew, I'm John Sadak. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network. Now to Scott Graham and Donnie Marshall. More college hoops. It's Towson Northeastern as we say so long from the home of the champs.